Hey crazies, have you ever looked inside a microwave oven? And no, I don't mean the spot where your food goes. I mean, have you ever looked at the electronics with the casing off? No? Good, don't, it's super dangerous. But also the circuit is kinda genius, so let's talk about it. It's incredibly simple, just a magnetron with its own power supply. A type of power supply that's so inefficient, it's almost never used. So how do microwaves get away with it? Before we get started, I'm a trained professional. I know how to work with electricity without putting myself at risk. This isn't a mess around and find out kind of situation. Do not try this at home. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. This power supply design only has three components, a transformer, a capacitor, and a diode. Seriously, that's it. This combination of components has a special name. It's called a half-wave rectifier. But I suppose not all of you are familiar with this terminology. Alternating current, or AC, is what you'd get from a wall socket. Direct current, or DC, is what you typically get from a battery. But sometimes you want DC without having to worry about batteries. That's why we need rectifiers. Rectifiers convert AC into DC, but not all rectifiers are created equal. As the name suggests, this half-wave rectifier is at most 50% efficient. Realistically, it's more like 40% though. Why even use it then? We normally don't, but microwave ovens are one of the few exceptions. To understand why, we need to go deeper. Starting at the wall, the transformer is the first step. Now, this isn't just any transformer. This thing is a beast. It's, it's a beast. beast! A phone charger like this is your typical everyday transformer. It takes 120 volts from the wall and turns it into just a few volts so it can charge your phone's battery. That's why we call it a step-down transformer. It turns the voltage down. The one in the microwave oven is a step-up transformer. It turns the voltage up. That means it's extremely dangerous. It takes the 120 volts from the wall and turns it into about 2,000 volts. At least that's the wave average. And there's nothing limiting the current, which means I can do this. <laughs> Don't mess with these things if the microwave is plugged in. Unplugged, they're generally pretty safe though. At that point, it's just a lump of mostly iron and copper. It's like a paperweight. It could still be risky though with that capacitor in there, which is also potentially dangerous. It's got a big whopping resistor built in to discharge it, but resistors don't last forever. If the resistor is burnt out, that capacitor could hold its charge for longer than you might expect. Like for years? Well, not that long. There's always leakage. The capacitor could still be dangerous for several days though. So the safest option is for us to discharge this before we go any further. Nothing happened. Do we need to run it for longer? No, it just means the bleed resistor's still good, which means the microwave's still good. Anyway, capacitors store electric charge on their metal plates, and therefore they store energy in the electric field between those plates. That energy can be used for all sorts of things. The capacitor in the microwave oven is using that energy for, uh, well, this might make the most sense if we take some measurements. But my ancient multimeter is not gonna cut it this time. We need an oscilloscope, like this one I got from Keysight Labs. Keysight isn't a sponsor, but in the interest of full disclosure, they did send this to me for free. Frankly, oscilloscopes are a bit outside my budget. So huge thanks to Daniel Bogdanoff at Keysight Labs for helping me out with this project. Speaking of which, let's get back to it. I wanna take measurements inside the microwave oven, but just in case I was forgetting something, I asked a friend for a second opinion. What are you doing? Don't you know what happens if you put a probe in a microwave oven with all its wires and metal? Let's test to make sure I'm not wrong. Hmm, maybe nothing? Oh, jeez! Yes, see? It will burn and melt your probe, it can damage your microwave oven and is a fire hazard too. I read your email wrong. You wanted to probe the guts inside the microwave oven. Like the transformer, not the... I burned this for no reason. 
Still, this transformer outputs over 2000 volts AC. That's so dangerous. And to have any voltage, you would have to turn on the microwave oven, which means the Megatron is also on radiating around. And if you accidentally touch the transformer output with the probe ground or your hand, See what I mean? And worst of all, the scope input is rated for 150 volt RMS, not 2000 volts, and you don't want to damage your precious scope. So stop it. Oh, that was a close call. Okay, okay, let's rethink this. It's just a half wave rectifier. These things come in all sizes. How about we just create a low voltage version and test that one with the scope instead? No, it's not the same exact circuit, but it's gonna be safer for Experiment Clone and for the scope. His middle name might be Danger, but I put a lot of work into Experiment Clone. I don't really wanna have to start over. Plus, the waves we're gonna see are gonna be roughly the same shape anyway. It doesn't really matter. All we need is a step-down transformer, a capacitor, a diode, and a dummy load resistor. Oh, oh, and a breadboard to help keep things organized. We'll be using the transformer at all times. This will not only keep the voltage down, but will also keep the circuit isolated from ground. Without it, best case scenario, our breaker trips. Worst case scenario, we fry the scope. The label on our transformer says 12 volts, but we measured it and it's actually closer to 15 volts. Always measure first. Anyway, we should be ready to hook things up now. Let, let's start with the diode. We'll just slide that between the 15 volt leads, plug it into the wall and, oh, 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 oh boy. Well, that didn't work out. The circuit is what controls the current and apparently that was too much. We'll also need to keep the load resistor in there at all times. So our starting circuit looks something more like this. You see the line that's moving up and down? Ah, I do. You want it on the line? Yeah, and just move it up into the middle of the wave. There we go. The scope shows half the wave is missing, which is exactly what we'd expect for a diode. For comparison, if we take the diode out and just leave the resistor in, we get a full sine wave. See, a, a diode only lets current flow through in one direction, so all the negative peaks just end up wasted. Hence the name, half wave rectifier. Only the forward half of the wave passes through. How is that useful? It, it isn't. We need to tweak it a little. As it stands, the voltage is broken. We need something to smooth it out. That's where the capacitor comes in. Remember how we said capacitors store energy in their electric field? That energy can be used during the blocked half of the cycle. If you connect the capacitor in parallel with the load, it can charge during the first half of the cycle when the diode is allowing current to flow. When it's not allowing current to flow from the source, the charge on the capacitor can still be released into the load. Energy comes from the transformer for the first half and from the capacitor for the second half. The resulting wave is kind of interesting and incredibly useful. During the first half, the capacitor charges quickly. During the second half, it discharges, but slowly. When it's time for that capacitor to charge again, it's only given up some of what it had. As the cycle repeats, you get a pattern that's almost DC, but a little ripply. That's why we call this a rectifier. It turns AC into at least roughly DC. But is this actually happening in the real circuit? Whoops, Experiment Clone put the capacitor in backwards. In case you're wondering, this is what the capacitor looks like now. Don't make this mistake, learn from my experience. If you're using a polarized capacitor, it and the diode have to be pointed the same direction. Once everything is hooked up properly, we get exactly what we'd expect on the scope, a roughly DC voltage with ripple. I love it when the model matches reality. For practical reasons though, we don't usually use half wave rectifiers. Are you gonna make me ask? Ask what? So why do we use it in a microwave? Oh, right, that, that, that's where we started this whole thing, isn't it? This resistor represents the load, the actual device you're trying to power. In a microwave oven, that's a magnetron. But if you look close enough, you'll notice something interesting. The magnetron isn't connected across the capacitor. It's connected across the diode. Rather than the capacitor making up for missing energy on the off cycle, it adds extra energy during the on cycle. This isn't being used as a half wave rectifier. It's what we call a half wave doubler. Rather than ripple DC, we get the entire wave from the transformer. But there's something the scope isn't showing us. 
the wave is shifted. It, it might be a full cycle, but it never actually goes negative. Our circuit takes a wave that goes from negative 2700 volts to positive 2700 volts and makes it go from zero volts to 5400 volts. It doubles the peak voltage just by shifting it, hence half wave doubler. But it's not a very useful pattern, unless you're a magnetron. Having the voltage come in pulses is perfect for generating microwaves in a cavity, but that's a topic for another day. Of course, nothing is perfect in real life, as many graciously explained to me. The load created by the magnetron is going to counteract some of the shift, cutting a bit of the wave off. And sure enough, hooking up our circuit just like the oven gives us that sine wave. But this isn't that big of a deal if you're just using the microwaves to cook food. You don't need it to be perfect, you just need it to work. So, will you ever look at a microwave the same way again? Please share in the comments. Thanks to Mehdi from Electroboom for consulting with me on this and for the cameo. A special thanks goes to my Patreon patrons and YouTube members like Bosphorus, who recently upgraded to the Asylum Counselor level. Thanks, Bosphorus. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. I can't, I can't help it. <laughs> It just happens. It's my crazy face. <laughs> a lot of people were wondering why no one talks about angular diameter turnaround. I'm honestly not sure. I think cosmologists see it as more of an obstacle to overcome in their observations. Like, they're not trying to hide it. They just don't see it as important. Anyway, thanks for watching.